Hey, welcome back, Richard. Can you hear us? I can. Great. And uh, I just want to make uh, another uh, point about the water filters going back to survival. And uh, if we get in those type of situations, is uh, you can get also a portable filter. Um, there's something that I purchased myself, and uh, it's called a Catadyne uh, Hiker Pro. It's uh, relatively not cheap, but it's you know it's reasonable in price, and um, it's good to have in your backpack if you want to have a bug out bag. Um, it's uh, pretty light, and it produces a quart of water per minute. And uh, you can put it in, uh, you can put it in a puddle of mud and still get uh, clean tasting water out of it. So, you all have some really good points, you know, which is one of the reasons I wanted to start the show off with something to lead into so many other topics down the road as we go. You know, like ham radio operators, for example, have a class for disaster preparedness. I mean, I'm not sure if they look at it the way we are, but it would be a good place for you to start locally, you know. So anyway, we've discussed water, filtering, etc. So what about food, Patrick? Well, the best thing to do as far as food goes is um, find a source for either MREs or uh, you can get long-term storage food and make up your own food packs that you can take with you on a pinch. And that's something that people have to come to terms with also. If, according to how bad the disaster is, and like say for instance, if they stop uh, paying the uh, Social Security and the welfare checks, you can count on the fact that those cities are going to be emptying out. And the have-nots are going to go looking where the haves are and just try and take from them. Actually, that's a couple points I wanted to mention too, right? I mean, how do you know the food that you would buy the store isn't on the verge of expiring when you buy it? And second of all, we've heard all these commercials about buying food to stock up or store for long-term, you know, events. I mean, how do you know what you're getting isn't old? You know, second thing is it's between two and $6,000 to stock up for a couple months of food. And where would you go to get it? What would be the source? You know, a good source that you can actually trust without wasting, you know, 6K. Well, it depends on how many people are, are with you, but, yeah, you're you're right on the bark there. If people would have purchased food six or seven years ago before we started heading into this food crisis, they probably could have gotten it for, like, 50% of what it is today. Then it's even becoming harder to find a good source of food, as you put it. Uh, the reputable dealers basically made their money and got out of the business at this point. Right. So it's all trial and error now. Really. One thing you got to keep in mind uh, is that those MREs are good for a long time. When I was in the uh, service, I went to Asia, and uh, we couldn't be re resupplied a couple of times, and uh, we had to resort to eating uh, K rations, or C rations, as they were called in the Navy. And um, they were still good from World War II. They even came with cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, that that would be the optimal choice. But um, the reality, they're pretty darn expensive at this point. Yeah. And if you are yeah. going to choose some, uh, you know, just try different companies and see which one you like before you just spend a bunch of money on it. So open it up, eat it, see if you like it. Well, I think if, if an, a disaster were to happen, it wouldn't really matter uh, if you liked it or not. As long as it was edible, uh, you're going to eat it. That's true, yeah, I guess. I, mean, I I even went as far as eating insects at one point in my life in order to survive. So, yeah, that's true. Now, that's hard to think about. Well, I, I, I think you should watch this after Armageddon. It's I think it's on Google Videos uh, now. And it, it is really interesting because they had some experts from universities and the military talking about survival. And um, one of the points that the military person said was that there are some people that just will not eat things like a snake. And they, they had a graphic illustration of the guy catching a snake and cutting it up and, and cooking it and whatever. But his son would not touch the snake. And he, he said, he actually told his father, I would rather die than eat a snake. And his father went ballistic on him. But, uh, you know, 
if uh, you're that hungry, you're going to eat anything. Well, I could eat a snake, but uh, I don't think I could, you know, pull up a grub worm or something and <laughs> chow down. When you get hungry enough and your stomach starts to swell, you'll you'll stoop that low, trust me. Yeah. One of the things that they noticed in after World War II was that there were no pets in Europe. No dogs, no cats. Oh. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So that, that could be another choice for people to do. Get a whole bunch of pets and start fattening them up. You know, I just heard something about that in the news recently. Uh... A cook on a show mentioned the recipe about uh, cats, I think it was, and was fired from the show. Did you hear that? No, I missed I that one. Yeah. I wouldn't doubt it. it. It was on the Coast to Coast AM, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well. well, you know, I, I have a horse that I raised ever since he was a month old, and I wouldn't hesitate in a heartbeat to save my life and other people's lives of you know, cooking him up over an open fire. Well, you know, you have to look at history and and see what desperate people have done. Um, The Donna Party of this country uh, was caught in a snowstorm, and people started dying off, and they started eating the corpses. There was an airplane crash in South America with a soccer team on board. People died there. They kept them in the snow, and they kept eating the the corpses until uh, the springtime when they could come off the mountain. So, you know, that when, when people are in extreme desperation, they're going to do some really strange things. Yeah, see, I don't even know if I could draw the line in that aspect either because I've been there where it, it hurts from being hungry. So, And I'm not enthused about turning to cannibalism, but that's the way the human mind works. Survival is the strongest instinct that we have. Well, that's one of the, the... You have to think of the definitions of things, and, and the definition of a human being, uh, or the, the requirements of a human being, is, of course, the first one is survival. And uh, for to, to meet that requirement, we're given four tools. First is fight, second is flight, third is feed, and the fourth is breed. So uh, as long as you can, if your survival is is questioned or the survival of the species is questioned, you're going to fo- follow one of those four rules. That's a little ironic. Fight, fight and flee, and feed and breed. Well, you know, if you think about it, it's it's dead on. You, you, yeah. The, mm-hmm. You're given the, the, your uh, adrenal gland is is made to fight or flight. Yeah. If you have no choices and and you're stuck there, you're going to fight. If you have the option, you're going to flee. If uh, so, um, if you're going to feed, uh, if you have the opportunity to feed, and it's not a nice opportunity, you're going to take it by fighting. And of course, the breeding is—is is, uh, you know, everybody thinks that that's a luxury. That's not a luxury. If you're gonna, if the if the human race is gonna survive, you better breed. And yeah, going I back, think, go ahead. I'm sorry. sorry. No, I was just, oh, I was gonna say, and uh, you're talking about, um, you know, as far as the food and the water and 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 how to approach that, as far as um, having something stockpiled or whatever. And it comes down to whether how long you're going to be able to maintain that position that you're at, and when you're going to have to go mobile. So, yeah, that was exactly the point of this uh, after Armageddon. It was uh, it was really an interesting uh, television show to watch. Uh, you know, you had you had uh, a people when they become desperate and isolated, they start collecting in in small groups or gangs or roving packs and uh, if they're not constructive they uh, they go after targets they, they see a house that looks nice and neat and clean and doesn't look already like it's been ransacked they'll go in it kill everybody in there and take everything they they need exactly one of the one of the points that was made 